Hello, my dear students. As the board exams have come to an end, many students have started asking me about you know various steps that they should follow to crack the IPMAT indoor QA sections. So I thought, why not I make a video for everyone? So here we are today with this video on how to crack IPMAT indoor QA sections. In this video, we will discuss about the past year papers, the cutoffs, what should be a preparation plan, how to identify the important topics, what learnings can you get from the past papers, what should be your strategy during the mock tests and the sim tests, and some motivation. So let's get going without wasting a lot of time. So first, let us understand all about the examination. The paper pattern and the cutoff for IPMAT Indoor has remained the same over the last two years. So in IPMAT Indoor 2022, there were 15 questions of QA short answer, there were 30 questions of QA MCQ, and there were 45 questions for verbal ability, and the same paper pattern followed for 2023 paper as well. Each question carries four mark. Now it is very important to understand that the short answer section does not have negative marking. If I look at the cutoffs for the short answer section, it was 20 marks out of 60 in 2022 and 12 marks out of 60 in 2023, which means you just had to solve five and three questions respectively in each of these years to clear the cutoff. There are 15 questions in this section. So dear students, you need to understand that you can easily leave seven to eight questions and even then you would have attempted a very good number of questions in this section. So make sure that you don't panic and try to solve all questions. You are easily allowed to leave seven to eight questions. And even if you have to leave 10 questions and you solve the other questions accurately, more or less you would have assured that you've cleared the cutoffs. Similarly, if you look at the QA MCQ section, looking at the numbers on the screen, the cutoffs were 43 and 39 in this section, respectively for the two years that we are discussing. So out of 120, only these many marks, that is out of 30 questions, even if you would have solved 12 questions correctly, you could have cleared the cutoff. And if you ask me a good attempt, that is a number of attempts to be on the safe side, I would say if you would have solved 15 to 17 questions in this section, in each of these years, you would have done a good job. That is, you were supposed to leave at least 10 to 12 questions in this section. Which means that if you get adamant and get stuck on a question and don't leave it unless you solve it, and spend 10 minutes on a certain question, you are doing only harm to yourself. So try to be aware of this and try to avoid this in, in the papers that you take. So let us go ahead and see the preparation plan. Now I have divided the preparation plan into two parts, that is level one and advanced. So level one plan means you cover all the syllabus, you don't leave any topic because you know you don't know which topics would have the easy questions in your paper. So you don't want to miss out on the easy questions. Therefore, cover the concepts from all topics. Don't leave any topic completely. Further, don't just go through the concepts. You also have to solve the exercise. You have to take topic-wise tests and you have to take mock tests. Only this will ensure that your practice is thorough and you are able to apply the concepts in the examination. Further, it is very important to solve the past year IPMAT papers to understand the paper pattern, to get adapted to the paper pattern, and to understand the type of questions that you get. You know, you need that practice to leave the questions. For that, you need to solve those kind of papers, right? So that is why it is very important to solve the past year papers and understand what concepts are used in each question. You'll realize that most papers or most questions have multiple concepts involved. And if you are conceptually strong, you would be able to apply the concepts in the questions. Last but not the least, it is very important to solve at least 10 SIM IPMAT indoor tests. These are nothing but IMS mock tests for IPMAT indoor, which have detailed analysis and video solutions for each question. So you get to know what is the best method and whether you use the best method or not. And it gives you a detailed analysis of how much time you have taken for each question, which question you've done right, which question you've done wrong and where you could have improved, right? So with this understanding, let us also understand what learnings do you get by solving past year papers. So after having seen past year papers for the last five years, 
which have been officially available. Our learnings are these. There are at least half the questions which are moderate difficulty level. So they're not very difficult. They're not very straightforward also. They have multiple concepts involved. But if you have a thorough understanding of the concepts, you will be able to apply the concepts and you know get to the answer. They might have a small trick or you know a small catch involved. But still, they're not very lengthy or very difficult. The other one fourth is slightly easier side, straightforward, simple application of the concept. And there are almost 25% questions which are very difficult or lengthy. These questions are definitely a no-no. You have to leave them in the examination. Further, what we also understand is the, con the moderate and the easy questions also don't appear to be easy. They might appear to be a little difficult or tricky, but if you have a conceptual understanding, you'll be able to identify that. There are multiple concept application based questions. So each question could have one or two different concepts involved. Also, if your core concepts are clear, you will be able to apply them. And there are at least 30% questions which are very lengthy or difficult. Even the moderate questions sometimes could be a little lengthy. So these questions should be identified and not attempted at all. Lastly, we'll discuss about the art of leaving questions, which is the most important skill or the art that you need to develop to ace the IP mat QA sections. So make sure that you practice both types of questions, the MCQ and the short answer. Because remember, short answer section does not have answer options. So you need a practice to be able to solve these kind of questions. There are special tricks to be able to solve these questions quickly and get to the answer even without solving. So you should have an understanding of these shortcuts. Advanced concepts, methods and trick will give you the edge over others, but that will help only after you have done the basics first. So make sure you do the basics and then move towards the advanced. If you try to understand what questions have been coming and you know which, which topics should be covered so that you are able to clear the cutoff, we realize that from the areas like arithmetic, numbers, linear and quadratic equation, DI and LR, the questions generally are solvable. They are not very, very difficult or the concepts are also not very new. Okay, and these are concepts which are fairly simple. So if you just want to clear the cutoff, even if you do really well in these areas, you would be able to clear the cutoffs. However, after the cutoffs, there is also an interview stage and there is 65% weightage to your total score. So therefore, you would also want to do well in the section. So just clearing the cutoff may not be enough. If you want to ace the section, you can't leave the advanced maths topics. That is the topics that have been coming in your class 10th, 11th and 12th. So coordinate geometry, trigonometry, matrices, all these topics are slightly more advanced as compared to the ones which were listed earlier. But once, you, once you're done with these topics, you would easily be able to score 50 to 50, 45 to 50% in the QA sections. And that is where you get an edge over the other candidates. So make sure you don't leave any of these topics. All these topics listed over here are very, very important. Further, how do you go about the QA advanced concepts? So when I say advanced concepts, you've already covered all the basic concepts, but there could be slightly more tricky and challenging concepts or tricks which, you know, which would help you handle slightly lengthier questions also a bit easily. IMS has provided you a lot of material for this. There are all these IPM sessions in your IPM syllabus at IMS, which cover all the advanced concepts. So there are these IPM topics which are separate from the regular topics. So cover them only after you've done the basic concept of that topic. Further, after your entire syllabus gets done, now you'll also get access to master classes which have advanced tricks and revision of all these IPM level concepts that were covered throughout the syllabus. And yes, if you take IMS SIM IPMAT indoor tests and score above 150, you are added to a club 150, which is a group of top performing students and you get access to top mentors, top peer group. You know, all the live sessions are done here with the analysis and live mock solving. So all this helps you in developing further and you know improving your chances of acing the QA section. Moving on, what should be your strategy during the SIM IP mats for the QA section? Again, as I was telling you, how do you develop the art of leaving? 
So the art of leaving is very, very easy. Which questions should you attempt or skip to maximize your score? It's as easy as A, B, C. A, B, C? Really? A simply means abhi karo. So when you go across the questions, you'll come across certain questions. When you look at them, you'll easily be able to identify, okay, isme to aisa karna hai, aisa karna hai. Or you know what is the step, step two, step three of the question and how will you reach to the final answer. Such questions are known as abhi karo or type A questions. You should do them as soon as you see them. And generally, they should not take more than a minute and a half. At max, two minutes for such questions. You do them in the first round itself. Then there are questions which are known as baad mein. That is type B questions. You look at a question, you're not sure what, should, what would happen after the first step. Or you're not sure about the entire process or you're not sure about the concept involved, but you feel that you can, you may or may not be able to do it. Try such questions for 30 seconds. If you're getting anywhere, keep solving. If you feel that no, you're stuck up somewhere, leave these questions and come back to them after you have gone through all the questions and attempted the type A questions first. Okay, such questions generally uh, should be taken up in the second round of solving. And then there are some questions which are chordo. So in, in the type B questions itself, if you're taking more than five minutes or four minutes for a certain question, better leave that question. Move on, there would be other type B questions which would have, which would get solved in a lesser amount of time. So type B, type C questions are chhod do. The quest concepts are very difficult or they are very, very lengthy. Leave them aside, right? Only if you apply this in the paper, you will be able to attempt all the easier questions and score high in the IPMAT QA section. And yes, after you have put in all the effort and the hard work, you know, you will keep taking mock tests. You would, have put, you, you would have to put in five, six hours or seven hours or more for the next 50, 55 days till your IPMAT indoor paper comes in. In between, you would have some other entrances also. You would have to keep taking mock tests for them as well. But while doing this, when you take a few sim IPMAT indoor tests and you perform bad in, in those tests, or maybe when you're solving a certain topic and you're not able to understand the topic at all or you're taking two days to understand a certain topic, you know, don't take it as a failure because everyone goes through this and only if you keep working hard beyond that and dare to rise again, that you will succeed. So my dear students, arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. I wish you all the best in your IPMAT indoor preparation and I hope to see you in the Club 150 sessions. So join IMS SIM tests and you know, make sure that you get access to the best mentors across India. All the best.